let's talk finally what happened in the Western European leagues. And I am very thrilled that for now there are more French teams back there. And if I uh, see how I arrange the shirts, and this is all due to standing. So Barcelona, as we'll see, is projected still to be first in La Liga, then Real Madrid, then Atletico, fourth place Sevilla, and then in France we have PSG ahead of Marseille, ahead of Bordeaux at the moment. It clashes all over. I mean, those two, those two, those two don't like it. It's but that's the beauty of it. I also realized, so in order to have this really a nice background for all these leagues, I need one more Spanish jersey. Then I would put all the Spain jerseys on top and maybe where the Valencia jerseys hanging, put something there. I need two more French jerseys for, to replace the two PSG jerseys and two more Portuguese jerseys, because I would move Sevilla up there. To have two Portuguese and a third Portuguese team would uh, replace here this Barcelona jersey. That's the plan. So five jerseys needed to have a perfect background. At the moment, I fill it up with all uh, Barca, PSG, and Real Madrid jerseys, but it's already a lot better than it was a week ago. Speaking of Sevilla jersey, I'm wearing Sevilla and this one. Now, I'll let you take a guess which one's the fake and which one's the real one. Take a quick guess. I'm going to make a video about this because it's basically the same jersey. I'm wearing the fake, keep the real one up there. Um, I'm really looking forward to making that. Sevilla actually had over a great week and still, in the end, a little bit disappointed, I would assume. Let's get right to it. La Liga, we had midweek games and I probably should have done this La Liga video sooner. They did not, the last one is that I really want to do next. Um, League Iron jersey review, at least shoot them. They will be published probably after the international break, but uh, at least shoot them. So uh, that was the main reason for that. It actually started with, with a surprise. I really didn't think that Real Sociedad will lose at home to Valencia, but lose to did. Gomez getting in the 75th minute a late win uh, from what I didn't see much, but I think La Real was large, large, the better team. but. As it happens, um, Getafe uh, at least underlined their top of the table set with a 3 0 win over Betis, a team that just had lo lost very unluckily to um, Real Madrid, all goals in the first half. So, a uh, pretty big win for Getafe. Then, Real Ma uh, Uesca, Atletico Madrid. Everything I said about Atleti. Everything I see as it says as it's about Leti after the first game, how fun they are. No, everything was gone. It was boring as hell. Villarreal beat Alaves 3-1. Uh, then Elche gets a win at Eibar. Eibar having a rather uh, bad start. Real Madrid gets another labored win over Real Valladolid. Uh, Vinicius Junior actually scoring the goal. Uh, and every Real Madrid week victory, same story. Not convincing, in the end they get it done. More consistency than other teams in the league. Um, Athletic Bilbao against Cadiz, an absolutely crazy game where uh, Bilbao was at times two men up. I mean, they gave up an own in the 57th when they already a man down. And then Cadiz even goes a second one down uh, with Negreira who gets two goals, uh, two uh, goals. Two ye yellow cards in short succession. They cannot find an e equalizer. Uh, if I was a Bilbao fan at, at the moment, I would be really, really concerned about my team because they keep losing and not against great op op opposition. They may have had to play Bar Barcelona, but that game got postponed because Barcelona started late in the league. And since then, I think uh, Bilbao is in a really, really bad shape. Sevilla, though, gets what they needed to go. I mean, had a goal the this on 67th. Uh, but in stoppage time, Eniziri gets finally the goal, although Lopetego got himself sent off and needed to watch the game um, against Barcelona on the weekend from the stands. But uh, Sevilla gets more consistent. I, I'm really curious to see if they can continue their, um, their run this way because they already had Bayern pretty much on the ropes as well with their also high pressing, uh, very uh, I don't want to say mechanic, but very well-trained style, doing a good job. 
And then Barcelona gets the most on Barcelona like victory of all time. Ansu Fati gives them the lead. I have to say, I did not necessarily like that the Barcelona black played in the black jerseys. I think then the regular home jerseys would, would have done. Although those black jerseys, I know many like them. They're not proper Barca away jerseys. They maybe third jerseys or, or whatever. In any way, Ansu Fati gives them gold and long leg gets sand, sand off for an elbow in driving rain. Uh, Barcelona still holds on. I mean, uh, Ongoma, Olasa, and then a very late goal from Sergio Roberto give them a 3 0 win. They worked for each other, they were tough, and even with a man down, they ground out the victory against a Celta team that never really got running. And Celta is kind of this yo yo team, one's good, one's bad. Uh, it's kind of disappointing. Uh, Granada also sooner got postponed because Granada had to play in the Europa League. So after this midweek round, we had Getafe now top of the table uh, and Valencia gets a second win remember they won the first uh, a game of the uh, of the season but you always had the feeling Valencia is not really good and Real Madrid keeps adding points like a little hamster a little bit little bit little bit I mean goal uh, the goals for two tell the a whole other story Barcelona on the other hand had within two games seven goals gone, none conceded. I mean, this is, was, is also not very Barcelona-like. Whereas uh, Sevilla at least had one quite conceded, but also gets two win in in a row and bolted well for an uh, epic matchup at the camp now. On the other end of the table, Bilbao keeps dropping. Uh, this is for me the biggest is the disappointment of, of the season. Also Atletico Madrid, you know, you start out very, very brightly and then you have a nil-nil against Uesca and everything that you said was enjoyable was suddenly gone. And it was a similar story um, on the weekend. Eibar gets off the schneid with a win against Real Valladolid. And Valladolid, I thought it was a team that could get something done. No, this time Eibar wins. So in Spain, it's really everyone can almost beat everyone. And then Villarreal, who looked horrific against Barcelona, Get a nil-nil Atletico Madrid even were probably the better team. I mean, Atletico Madrid had not even a shot on goal. It was a pretty poor performance. I don't know how they got the six against Granada and suddenly they, ha uh, they have two nil-nil in a row against opponents that you would actually think they should win. So a really, really, really a disappointing game once more. And then Getafe, just beating, fresh of beating Betis, is highlighted by Real Sociedad, who have no problem getting uh, disposing of Getafe. Oya Sabal in the 20th with a penalty. Then Marina and Porto uh, late add two more, with La Real playing actually really well and very pleasing to, to them, making up for the loss to Valencia. Valencia, on the other hand, Win at Real Sociedad and suddenly lose to Betis. I mean, uh, if you look at the, re the results, um, Real Sociedad lose, lose to Valencia. Valencia uh, loses to Betis. Betis loses to Getafe, Getafe to Real Sociedad. Anyone's guessed who, who is the best team of those? I actually would say, say Real Sociedad and then maybe Betis from what I've seen. Betis completely outclassed Valencia. Uh, was so much better. And uh, Joaquin uh best player on on the pitch he assisted canales and he also assisted the second goal through tay although he wanted to already be substituted uh i mean everyone was uh, celebrating he had already indicated i want to come off and he's just lying on the pitch completely gassed but that guy played in the 2002 world cup was the up and coming young player of that world world cup and did not make the big spain squad and now is still a great player for betis it's uh Rather wonderful story, you have to say. Um, also, Suna beat Celta Vigo. <clears throat> Celta, you know, Celta is one of my uh, teams that I like. And Alaves gets a late win against Bilbao in a game that looked like nil-nil, but Eli gets the goal. And Athletic Bilbao, I mean, the teams that they're losing to, uh, there was Cadiz in there, there was Alaves in there. Um, we just had them uh, losing to Abar. I would be really worried if I'm an Athletic Club fan. Absolutely, this does not bode well for the future. But you know, maybe things can turn turn around. Levante already lost uh, midweek um, to Sevilla. They probably should have gotten at least a point against Real Madrid. But Real Madrid, again, Vinicius Junior gets an early goal, uh, nicely taken. 
Then Levante said I should have gotten an equalizer. Somehow don't get it, and then uh, Rodrigo sits Benzema for a late stoppage time goal to seal the Real Madrid win. And again, it's typically Real Madrid style, uh, grinding out a victory without much flair. Now, does this mean that they will win the league? We have to see about that. But it's rather impressive and boring in many ways. But uh, great teams usually grind out victories, if, even, even if they don't play well. Uh, Cadiz Granada 1-1 one, one, and then Barcelona Sevilla. Uh, I mean, all the action happened, uh, goals, 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 and wise happened in the first 10 minutes, uh, where De Jong, after kind of some uh, unsorted Barca defending, makes the goal. But then a messy pass is badly deflected by Navas, who wants to clear right on the path of, pass of Coutinho, makes it 1 1. But Sevilla really gave Barcelona trouble, absolutely um, bucked them in every regard and probably in the second half should have gotten the lead um yes at the end they were a little bit scrambling but i always had the feeling that sevilla was the better team in there the question is i always give them a tag most frustrating team in europe because can they keep it up uh is their squad deep enough can they keep it up because they usually start well and then some suddenly breaks down. It's also, now this team is kind of getting what Lopetegui wants from them. It, again, I mean, you should not go into war, what this, but what if Lopetegui would have stayed Spain coach in the 2018 World Cup? We already knew that Spain will be very, very strong and what Lopetegui did by signing up for Real Madrid basically shot uh, uh, Spain in the foot and started this channel. This was my first ever video that I did on this channel prior to the restart. So yeah, interesting stuff. So we get the following table uh, where Real Madrid now is top. You can see in the disbalance measure that La Liga is rather evenly. I mean, it's very, there's not one junk that has many, many, many points and one has little. It goes very grad gradually down. And also we can see that um, the before it was more by personal favorite, now it's a lot more even there because Barcelona dropped already points. Yes, Real Madrid, the, the two with Real Madrid has one win more. So for that reason, it evens itself out. Yes, Barcelona has the most impressive goal, the, the difference, as does Atletico Madrid, but Atletico Madrid cannot win anymore since it, it seems like they've wasted all their cannon powder there. And yeah, so uh, those the big three are still the big three according to projections, but the question is, can Sevilla get, get in there? Can Sevilla, I mean, they are a highly talented team. Can they make it through the season? Okay, it would be really, really in, interesting. Sevilla has a little bit the Lazio vibe from last season. Valencia, uh, surprising hang, hangs in, but you can already see they are not favored to get in the Champions League. They're more threatened for relegation, but for relegation, it is still Elche, Real Valladolid and Alaves, but Bilbao still only 40% less than Valencia, but I think this will increase rather soon. I don't know the matches for the next, next round, they have not been scheduled yet, so um, at least when I was collecting uh, the data. So let's move on to France. PSG winning easily over Angers. And you think, yeah, now PSG has, has arrived in the league and everything should be happy. No. Tuchel wants players. He wants. He says the squad is thin. We need someone to replace Thiago Silva. Blah blah blah. Leonardo not happy with it. Uh, nothing is well. At least on the, on on the pitch, Neymar had fun. Florenzi scored the first goal. Neymar scored two. Uh, Mbappe assisted one um, and scored one. The last one and Neymar also uh, assisted Idrissa Gay. So that sounded all fine. Saint Etienne, we talked about them as uh, top of the table two weeks we, we, we ago and really strong um, against Lars. They get an early red card and then it all goes pear shaped. A uh, minute after, uh, it was uh, tripping for last man. Penalty given for Lars is 1 0 uh, for Lars. They have done a goal disallowed. Then another Saint Etienne um, player, Kazri, is sent off. Uh, with a straight red card for, for tripping and it was easy for Lars to hang on to the victory. We see that Lars actually um, is rising as a promoted team. Nice totally 
dominated Nantes also because Giroto got already sent off in the third minute. So Nantes is playing basically the uh, whole match with a man down. And Dante gets them uh, the lead. Nice. However, they give up a penalty very late uh, in uh, in a st stoppage time that Lusa uh, equalizes and then now tries to hang on for life for the point but Thuram, I think he's uh, also related to um, Lilian Thuram, gets the winner for Nice uh, and gets them back on track. We had uh, Nîmes beating Montpellier 1-0, that was also a rather un un unexpected victory. Uh, Bordeaux rolls over Dijon, Dijon really lo looking almost like a surefire um, uh, relegation team. Um, Brest, their home form is pretty, pretty impressive against Monaco 1-0. Lorient also had a good start but uh, loses now 3-1 to Metz. So I think these, these were the two promoted sides playing each other. Lille has no trouble uh, at Strasbourg. And Rennes, just, at when, you know, just when I try to get a board on board with a the team, they disappoint point when again. It all means that PSG is the one that will be happiest from the entire round. So what happened? Rennes found themselves down in the 11th minute, uh, Rafinha and the Silva turned on around, but uh, uh, Reims, who I think had lost almost all the games up, up on this point, get an equalizer through DR, and Ren cannot find the winner, and uh, it's vital points drop if you want to stay in the title race. And similar for Lyon and Marseille, I mean, uh, Dimitri Payet gives Marseille uh, the lead, but then for a rather nasty foul gets a red card and then everything shifts to Lyon where Uawa converts a penalty, they even have a goal disallowed but I saw the most of the sacks I can have and yes Lyon tried but I have to say it was a rather, um, let's say I was more on Barcelona Sevilla. I think that says it all. So this 1-1 one, one also plays deeply into the cards of PSG. If you look on the, on the table, it's Rennes ahead of Lille, the thanks to goal, more goals scored here. Uh, we also see it's still a very balanced league, although there seems to be, you know, seven points is something that many gets and then there's a quick drop off in, in, in a way, but it's still very even. But PSG is now only within two points of the league lead and it's not inconceivable that within two two rounds PSG is top again. Last still, yes, they've beaten PSG uh, very much on top there as well. Uh, Rennes, Lille and Olympique Lyonnais are the two teams that are still uh, also favorites to make it into the Champions League. With Lyon though having a rather slow start, too many draws in there, so let's see. And uh, also lots of uncertainty surrounding squad. We know now that Memphis State Pi will stay at least until mid-season. So let's see where this will, will be going for relegation. Uh, Lorient, Dijon at the moment. Again, we have to see how this develops. Here we know what the next fixtures are. Uh, the standard fixture, two teams that are back there between Marseille and Bordeaux, at least uh, traditionally. But I think Lille against Lens, that's a huge derby. Uh, up north, there's also Breton Tower between Nantes and Brest. PSG has to go to Nîmes. I would expect a win there. And where do we have Rennes against Dijon should also be a win. So let's see, they are already preparing for the Champions League, hence the early kickoffs. Portugal, I owe you the 2 1 win of Family Cow over Um uh, You know what's left of the team, that's another really sad story there. Um, which basically meant that Family Cow went a little bit up the table. But the round was dom dominated by the shock defeat of Porto at home to Mar Maritimo. Uh, Pino gives Maritimo the lead that Pepe can equalize. Um, he's a bit tayish, but then Pino gets the lead for Maritimo again in the 52nd minute. Then uh, Tejas misses a penalty for Porto. Uh, and in stoppage time, Nanu makes it 3-1 uh, and then uh, Porto just pulls him back. That's a shock loss for Porto. And Befica duly can take care of it, but it uh, was not an easy win against newly promoted Farense. Uh, Pizzi gives them the lead. But Farenze misses the penalty, but uh, scores a minute later through Luca. 
Then two Seferovich goals put Befica on the winning road, but they have to give a one more through Fernandes. So um, also interesting. Family car, Rio Ave player, one one draw, and Sporting uh, survives. You know, kind of gets a little bit back from the loss to last midweek. Braga with a big win against Tondela as well. Meaning that now Benfica and Santa Clara, the two teams that basically share crests, are all the way on the top of the table. Porto is only second and the race is super tight. I mean, yes, it's 57 to 40 at the moment, but that can change at any time and it will probably uh, decide in a direct uh, in the head to head. Uh, Sporting also in the Braga had a rather slow start, so they finally got the got the win. We have to see where this is going. And yeah, uh, Boavista is still also a favorite to get rele relegated ahead of Tondela, so that's also rather interesting. Uh, again, I don't know what will be happening in the last round because they're not, uh, I don't have the dates yet. So, let me know what you thought about the Western European leagues, how things are going. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.